Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to our panel session, ONAP for Enterprise Business. I'm Catherine Lefebvre. I'm the ONAP TSC Chair, working as an AVP at at and And today, our speaker will be Amar Kapadia, co-founder of Arna Networks, Javier Singh Seti, software engineer at Arna Networks, and Bin Yong or ONAP Architecture Subcommittee Vice Chair, but also Principal Engineer at Ericsson. Let me tell you first why ONAP become a true enabler for innovation in support of future industry use case. Over the last four years, the ONAP Committee has been collaborating with the industry through cross open source committee engagement and cross influences with standard design organizations. We have developed impactful features and functions like 5G footprint, network slicing, and ORAN integration. We continuously add more cloud native and modular capabilities, secure and robust integration. We are also implementing ONAP best practice and global requirements in our source code to offer scalable, reliable, and secure production readiness deployment. All of this make ONAP a true enabler for innovation. While ONAP has primarily been used by network service providers to support their network automation transformation and run virtualization journey, the ONAP community also recognized the value of ONAP in enterprise vertical markets. A new task force, ONAP for Enterprise Business, has been created accordingly early this year. So, Amar, can you please give us more insight about our ONAP for Enterprise roadmap? Yes, thank you, Catherine. As uh, Catherine mentioned, this working group's goal is to show some concrete set of activities that can demonstrate value for enterprises. The first, one of the first use cases we are working on is around uh, private 5G. The market estimates for private 5G are extremely promising. You've probably heard the numbers. Nokia has estimated it'll be an $800 billion market by 2030. ABI Research, STL have even predicted larger numbers. Along with edge computing, private 5G is expected to revolutionize industries such as Industry 4.0, precision agriculture, hospitals, smart cities, V2X, construction, and more. So as you see, we have a rich roadmap for the enterprise working group. Broadly speaking, it's in two aspects. One aspect is collaboration with the 5G super blueprint, which we will talk about in the next slide. And where this working group is the ONAP subject matter expert and all the ONAP related uh, work architecture is being driven by this enterprise working group. The second is to integrate with a very novel network slicing approach from the University of Southern California called Sabres which is uh, highly secure as well. So now with that background, some high points on the roadmap. So what have we accomplished so far? We kicked off the task force in the first half. We did the architecture work to define how Magma can be integrated with ONAP. And you will see a lot more details about that in subsequent slides. And we have completed the integration of ONAP with Anukit Anukit, as you will see in a subsequent slide, is the NFVI layer. It's standardization of the NFVI layer, and we have completed the integration with the Kubernetes version of uh, Anukit. And we have also integrated <coughs> Magma with uh, Anukit. What are we working on this half, in the second half? We are starting to implement the architecture work we did in the first half, meaning implementing the integration of the Magma controller and access gateway with ONAP. And you will see a lot more details as we go along. We are now working on architecting some of the data collection KPIs and metrics. 
which we will implement subsequently. For this half, we are going to exercise the Magma uh, 5G core, uh, which we will talk about more as well, uh, with a UE and GNODE B emulator. And finally, we are starting the design work to integrate with Sabres. Next half, we are going to implement many of the things we are architecting in this half. So data collection uh, and implementing the KPIs will be done next half, doing some control loop work, implementing initial Sabres integration, and uh, with core slicing with uh, ONAP. And we will replace the GNODE-B and UE emulator with an actual RAN. So it'll be an, a commercial RAN that we will use. Subsequently, later next year is going to be all around making what we have done more sophisticated. So the orchestration will be more sophisticated in terms of going to a fully cloud native environment. We'll be handling multiple access gateway CNFs, optimization for network slicing, more complicated LCM operations. And then later in 2023, will be all around machine learning, where we will look at AI ML patterns. We will integrate with a function called NWDAF, Network Data Analytics Function, which is all around machine learning. Okay. Can go to the next one. So this one talks about our collaboration with the 5G Super Blueprint. The 5G Super Blueprint is a place where we can integrate numerous Linux Foundation projects that are all extremely relevant to 5G and edge computing. So before this initiative, there was no single place to integrate all these projects. And the 5G Super Blueprint is such a place. And as I mentioned, the ONAP Enterprise Working Group is a subject matter expert. And all of the ONAP design work and a lot of the implementation is coming, is driven uh, by this Enterprise Working Group. So as you see, the scope of the blueprint is quite ambitious. It goes from the user edge to the service provider edge to the cloud slash core. It has edge computing components. It has 5G components. Uh, for today, we are not going to talk about the edge computing portions. We are only going to talk about the 5G and the core cloud components. So the notable parts are ONAP. So ONAP will be providing orchestration and lifecycle management. Historically, this role has been called the MANO, Management and Orchestration. More recently, there is a new term called SMO, Service Management and Orchestration. We are approaching this from a cloud native point of view. So we are using Kubernetes and using that to orchestrate both containers and virtual machines. 5G network slicing we talked about support for ORAN SC as the SMO. Initially, it'll be a commercial ORAN, but over time we will support ORAN SC, which stands for software community, ORAN software community, control loop automation analytics and more. So that's the role of ONAP. We will be integrating with Magma. You will see more about Magma in a subsequent slide. It's a 5G core, it's an open source 5G core, LTE and 5G core, I should say, in the Linux Foundation. ORAN SC, which is the implementation of the ORAN software components. And last but not the least, ANUKIT, which as I mentioned already is the NFVI layer. And for purposes of this blueprint, we are using the Kubernetes version of ANUKIT. There are two, OpenStack and uh, Kubernetes. So that's the whole scope. And um, with that, I'm going to hand it off to the next speaker, uh, Prabhjot. Yeah, thank you, Amar. So uh, coming to ONAP compliance with uh, Anuket, with respect to platform development process, ONAP is already leveraging conformance, uh, functional validation and performance frameworks from Anuket. As part of this initiative, we are essentially looking forward to use the infrastructure management aspects, leveraging uh, Kubernetes reference infrastructure based on uh, reference architecture and implementation projects in uh, Anukit. Essentially covering Kubernetes conformance aspects most for uh, most of the use cases, enabling faster, robust onboarding into uh, production environments. 
and in a process of course uh, saving on engineering cycles and uh, reducing cost so onap is uh, already a fully containerized uh, platform uh, deployed using kubernetes and as part of this we are rolling out onap itself and some of the other managed services like uh, magma controller on a kubref uh, environment where uh, kubref is a uh, project under anuket that delivers the kubernetes based uh, reference implementation according to the uh, reference architecture ra2 specification uh, allowing us to achieve conformance as per uh, rc2 uh, uh, project of uh, anuket so onap as well as uh, magma controller deployment on kubref is already validated making onap compliant uh, with anuket standardized uh, kubernetes infrastructure additionally in future uh, we may also uh, look forward to leveraging some of the conformance and performance framework from anuket which will uh, allow us to enrich information with respect to in interoperability aspects as well as the capacity or capability of the various uh, solutions that will be delivered as part of uh, this uh, task force Uh, next slide please so another important piece of uh, the solution uh, with respect to uh, 5g uh, is magma so for those who are not familiar with magma it is an open source uh, packet core originally open sourced by facebook in 2019 and has been uh, has uh, recently uh, become a part of uh, linux foundation as represented uh, in the diagram on uh, right side magma essentially has three major uh, components access gateway providing packet core functionality equivalent of amf smf uh, upf in uh, 5g terminology however magma uh, itself is uh, a converged core and uh, uh, that's why access gateway also extend support for lte and carrier wifi second component is uh, federated uh, gateway which is responsible for interfacing with the mobile network operator core other important component is orchestrator and nms even though it is referred to as orchestrator it is mostly it mostly provides uh, more of a controller or ems functionality so we are going to be referring uh, to it as a magma controller which is mainly responsible for managing and configuring access gateways and uh, federated gateways along with collecting various telemetry data from these connected devices uh what's unique about magma as opposed to other open source uh, packet core projects is that it's already in uh, production and additionally the uh, project is backed by many contributors along with facebook making magma as the packet core of choice and from architectural perspective Mac magma core is uh, hyper scalable distributed where uh, you can take access gateways keep replicating it and scaling it out it is high uh, highly available with uh, many of uh, its component being already containerized and uh, cloud native except for access gateway containerization for which is uh, currently uh in progress it is vendor and uh, transport agnostic and uh, performs local breakout for internet uh, traffic it is also capable of interfacing with the uh, uh, mno core with the federated uh, gateway and uh, along with providing capability to perform uh, configuration and life cycle management uh, remotely all in all it gives a converged packet core uh, suitable for our uh, use case So with this, uh, I'll hand over to the next uh, speaker, uh, Bayam. Hi, thank you. Uh, now we talk about the ONAP Magma integration scope. We define two major integration scope here: initial scope and future scope. For the initial scope, ONAP is supporting orchestration of Magma controller and gateway, including access gateway. This function scope covers onboarding Magma CNF. and vnf packages defining services and orchestrating the services through onap orchestration flow by leveraging onap runtime components and cloud infrastructure 
Secondly, ONEP support magma control and access gateway configuration through the ONEP configuration flow. For instance, access gateway needs to be registered to the magma controller to be ready to work with the controller and ONEP. Another one is ONEP supports magma controller and access gateway lifecycle management through the ONEP CNF resource lifecycle management flows. For example, updating access gateway component. As the last initial scope, uh, magma network slicing will be supported. ONEP is a 5G network slicing orchestration platform conforming to 3GPP. Once Magma support network slicing later this year, ONEP and Magma can be integrated for the network slicing management. For the future scope, ONEP plans to support Magma controller access gateway control loops. For instance, ONEP collects network data through Magma and it can automate additional control loop lifecycle management orchestration actions. Also with the collected Magma network data, ONEP can support analytics. After that, Magma plans to go further for identifying AI machine learning patterns on Magma controller data for smarter management. Next slide, please. This is about uh, ONEP Magma integration realization. The diagram depicts how ONEP and Magma realize the integration. ONEP has several subcomponents for design, orchestration, policy, assignment, configuration, FM, PM, and Kubernetes interactions. Magma consists of three major components as addressed before, controller, access gateway, and federation gateway. Among them, controller and access gateway will be integrated into ONEP and tested first. The controller provides external interface for external systems. The access gateway implements CNF, BNF, PNF as IP edging handling. Federation gateways interacting with the MNO core network through 3GPP interfaces. ONEP manages Magma controller and access gateway onboarding and service design through the ONEP SDC component. Once Magma packages are onboarded to SDC, SDC designs Magma services based on the onboarded Magma modules and distribute the Magma service package across the ONEP component. As shown in the diagram, there are two main interfaces between ONEP and Magma, controller, northbound interface CM, LCM, and controller, northbound interface FM, PM. ONEP service orchestrator and associated components work together to orchestrate the Magma network service into Kubernetes through the first Magma controller northbound interface CM, LCM. Using the REST APIs, ONEP will register access gateway with the Magma controller and ONEP handles lifecycle management on access gateway. Another interface point between ONEP and Magma for FM PM is Magma controller NOSPAR interface FM PM through the VES agent. ONEP DCAE component will collect FM PM and other telemetry data through VES agent. This is the summary of the ONEP Magma integration. Now back to you, Catherine. So thank you so much, Amar, Payot, and Leon for sharing the uh, first accomplishment uh, made by the ONAP for Enterprise Task Force, and also to uh, give more insight about what we try to uh, accomplish in the coming months. So I also want to seize the opportunity uh, to, um, to welcome participation from new contributors that want to expand the applica applicability of ONAP. So if you're interested to join the ONAP for Enterprise Task Force, we are meeting on a bi-weekly uh, basis every Wednesday. Uh, if you want additional information, uh, you can uh, go to the ONAP wiki and also uh, type uh, the uh, task for ONAP for enterprise business. And finally, we have also a mailing list if you want to reach any of us and additional ONAP community members. 
So now let's open the floor to any live question from the audience. 